everybody. Welcome to Drinking with Ray. Drinking with Ray. Hey, first off, I just want to say anyone who watches my videos and has, hangs out, has a drink with me, listens to some stories and history and learn about these different brands that I've been doing and different kinds of beverages. I've been trying a lot of whiskey lately in Ireland. I appreciate you, man. You guys are awesome. Yeah. I, every single person that's even made it to this point, 30 seconds. Kudos to you, <laughs> you're awesome. So yes, this is Drinking with Ray, and uh, these are some more Irish whiskeys. I've been loving my Irish whiskey out here. Why not, because of this quarantine. So these Irish whiskeys are from a brand uh, called West Cork, so I'm here in Cork, City, Ireland, which is like the capital of the county Cork, I guess. It works like that. Yeah, anyways. Cork is the largest county in Ireland. Um, huge. So West Cork is way out. And one of my favorite geography aspects of these bottles is they have West Cork map, part of the logo, the jagged coast. Actually, the jagged west coast, southwest coast of Ireland. So what, uh, West Cork is way out that, that way um, from where I'm at right here in Cork City. So it's a much different area, a lot more rural, the rugged seas out there. Actually, it's pretty good for surfing, I've heard. You know, the Atlantic Ocean's out there, big waves hit, and uh, a lot of people still speak Irish, Gael Irish Gaelic out there. It's like its own little sea swept world out there and um, different cities like Skibbereen and Shul and Ahasketa, Dorum. So this one is made in, ah, that city, Skibbereen. Ooh, I like that name. <clears throat> All right, so of course we're gonna try them. I have two today, woohoo, two whiskeys, yeah. <laughs> so I have two today, both from West Cork. One is a little bit fancier than the other, but both are attached to whiskey and world history and all that stuff that I like, you know, so <clears throat> let's first talk about them now. So first, we have just the regular uh, bourbon cask blend by West Cork. And uh, for those who haven't watched my other videos on whiskey, bur uh, blend is where they take single pot still Irish whiskey and mix it with grain whiskey that's made from uh, like corn usually and some, other <clears throat> and some other stuff. Oh yeah, sorry about uh, my eyes and <clears throat> overall demeanor. I'm a little hazy right now. Hey fever, it's for real out here. The Emerald Isle is green with plants and uh, I'm a lifelong sufferer from seasonal allergies, depending where I am in the world. Sometimes in some years, I don't get it, but right now it's really hitting me. Okay, anyways, back to the whiskey. Oh, they need grain that causes allergy to make whiskey, malted barley and stuff like that. So the first one is aged in, a blend aged in a bourbon cask. All right, bourbon cask. We're gonna try that one first. That one's a little less expensive, 40% by alcohol. Uh, bourbon, you know, from the good old USA, Kentucky, uh, is where bourbon's made. And um, we're gonna go into why they put in bourbon cask in a minute. West Cork, the other one, sing is a single malt. So that means it's all the same uh, batch of barley. Not mixed with anything else or different years, but I don't believe they used a single pot still. It would have to say that on here if they did. But it's really cool that it's 12 years old. And this one is really interesting. Aged in rum casks for 12 years. Wow, that's really crazy and unique. Rum casks from Caribbean. I'm gonna go into a little bit about that history also, which is fascinating and perfect for today. Um, June the 15th, a holiday that a lot of us don't know about. So <clears throat> let's first give them a try and compare the difference, huh? Sound like a good plan? All right, let's do it. All right, let's give this blend a try first. West Cork aged in bourbon barrel, probably a couple years. 
at least two to four years. It doesn't actually say on there. Blend of hand-selected grain and malt Irish whiskey. All right, so 40% by volume. Nice color, a little clearish. See that? A little bit of a like hint of gold color. Ooh, tastes real sweet actually. Ooh, ah, phew, sorry, those allergies again. <laughs> All right, let's give it a try. nice you know it's uh it's your blend kind of taste it is it's not my favorite flavor in the world it's good don't get me wrong it's not a bad whiskey like a bottom of the shelf it's good but it has that blend kind of kind of vibe you know like uh jameson who's tried jameson on there this doesn't taste like jameson but it, it reminds me of that it, i think a blend an irish blend has certain characteristics and you know it's it's good it does does a trick <laughs> as they say but i really like it and it is good for what it is a lot uh cheaper cost so that's the bourbon barreled next let's go to i like to have a clear palate let me drink some water my pink water bottle this is the reason I got it, is because so I don't lose it. <laughs> I've lost so many water bottles that were like black or gray, so I can keep my eye on it. Oh man, okay, let's try the second one. Aged for 12 years in rum casks. Ooh. Limited release, with a little flavor from the West Indies, also known as Caribbean. All right, let's check out this one. This is on. Oh, I love that sound. So refreshing <laughs> and the anticipate sound of anticipation that's what that is so this one's a little stronger 43 percent and of course i love the map of west cork which is the southwest corner of ireland if you can imagine ireland kind of goes like that so out, out that way is america out this way is you know france and Eng england and France, Spain is down this way. <laughs> okay, it's hard to tell. All right, let's give this one a chance. Try. That, you know that's kind of interesting. Look at that. The coloring on the West Cork single malt. It's kind of similar to the blend. Look at that. I thought it would be a little darker, but maybe it has something to do with that rum cask. Ooh. But this one's a little pricier, aged longer, and also single malt, so I'm expecting some difference. Plus that rum, oh, I like rum. I've been to Puerto Rico, love the rums out there. You know, rum has an attachment with the United States and their that culture, historically. Anyways, all right, let's give this a try. Ooh, much more pungent, uh, flavorful smell. Maybe that's a cure to allergies. The smell of whiskey. <laughs> Drink with Ray! Hey! Anyone who made it this long, thanks for having a drink with me. Whoa! Whoa! Ooh, yeah, that's a much different flavor. Ooh, weird. It's like rum and whiskey had a baby. <laughs> that... And you can just get the hints of rum though. It's not a lot, but it's weird because rum is, it is a lot different, like sugary flavor than whiskey. Wow, interesting. So, time for history. Here, I'll have my two glasses to sip on. I have my, why not? I have two, have those over here. Show you the bottles. West Cork, awesome brand here in Cork County, Ireland. So let's go into some history like I always do for any of you who like all these stories and how whiskey is made. Props to you, man. We share something in common. Add me on social media. I'll put the links at the uh, at the bottom and at the end. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Yeah. We could talk whiskey and history, anything you want. All right. So first, we're just going to talk about why they put 
whiskey and casks. So the whiskey is clear when it first comes out of the distill, uh, pot still or triple distill technique or coffee still, it's clear. So what gives it this golden flavor is the wood. It soaks in the wood from, ooh, I don't wanna mix them up. <laughs> Let's put this one on this side. It soaks in the wood from the different casks, you know, and obviously this has to do with cutting down forests. I'm not really a fan of that environmental guy, but I get it though. So this has been done for a long, long time. We're gonna get into that for a second. But so for whiskey distillers, it's really expensive to make casks. Um, it could be about 10 to 20% of the cost. The total cost is if you had to build your own cask out of wood. And you know, the history of Scotland and Ireland where a lot of whiskey is made is long, 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 long history. And they're real small countries, you know, real small areas. The forests have been cut down for the most part long ago, any oak for barrels and you know, we're going back into the Celtic and Roman times in Scotland and you know, who knows, man. Long ago, those forests were cut down and used to clear for farmland and all kinds of stuff. So there's not a lot of wood left out here in Ireland and over in Scotland too. So a lot of times, and also because of that cost, uh, distillers in Ireland and Scotland get their barrels from America, bourbon barrels. Um, among several other places. Bourbon ones are actually the cheapest because they could only be used a two to four years in the USA and uh, then they could be used again. And there's specific rules about this. You can't use it for too short a time, too long. Um, but it's kind of nice that they recycle the product for many, 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 many uses. Not like a lot of, you know, crappy things in this world nowadays like plastic forks that you just use once and they last a thousand years. But anyways, I'm getting off topic, my tangents, you know. All right, so other things are used like sherry, wine, and, um, cognac barrels and all kinds of different things that whiskey distillers try it out and see if it'll work with putting whiskey in there and aging it over time. So this one's unique though, rum, which derives from interesting source and history rum. But first, let's st stick with the barrel. We'll get into that in a second. So barreling, uh, not in wood specifically, but goes back 7,000 BC. So that's 9,000, you know, or so years ago, almost 10,000 years ago, the pottery vessels have been found that were, you know, clay, dried clay, that had uh, alcohol residue in it. And, you know, Greco-Roman vases held wine and all kinds of things. Over the thousands of years that they found, um, Georgia, Georgian Kievan date back to 6,000 BC and Something else in China in 4800 BC. Sorry for looking at notes over here, but like specific dates. So they've been barreling and casking alcohol for a long time. Babylon, it says here, and uh, Egypt, all kinds of different things. So they use baskets and cloth. Oh, they had an ancient Egyptian word for cask. <laughs> That's where the word cask comes from. K-A-S-K. The same word that's on this bottle right here comes from ancient Egypt. That's incredible. Um, they don't know who ex exactly invented the cask, it says here, but they know that wood degrades old stuff and repeatedly in l over time. So it was good for storing alcohol in it. Um, did that make sense? I don't know. <laughs> hey, let's try the other one. So there was also in Babylon and the Mesopotamians. So wood started getting used sometime in there um, in that long after his long ago history, right around when BC turns to AD, the year zero, it kind of says here. The Celts 
from right around here in Ireland, started using wood casks. The, the Strabo, the Greek historian known for writing Geographia, mentions the wooden pitol of the Celts being larger than houses that they held and held alcohol inside. And Rome's Pliny the End Elder also mentioned this people that lived in the Alps that stored wine in wooden circled vessels with hoops. That is pretty much exactly what um, is used today. Same thing. So this technology goes back thousands and thousands of years and still used today to age these beautiful drinks. So I don't want to separate them. This one's rum, this one's... <laughs> so let's go into some more history. with rum and bourbon also. So, you know, today's Friday, June 19th, and it's a holiday in the US that somehow got erased from people's minds and history and weren't taught to us as kids called Juneteenth, where this guy, uh, emancipated slave, proclaimed that all uh, 1865, Proclaim that all slaves are free and it's a holiday, official holiday for the emancipation of the slaves. And they don't teach us about it in school in America. Do you see a problem with that? Oh, all right, let's sip, sip, stick to the subject though, because we have African Americans involved in both rum and bourbon. So let's start with bourbon. This Irish whiskey, the blend is aged in bourbon barrels. Ooh, bourbon, so good, so flavorful. It's own kind of thing going on. Um, Tennessee, Kentucky, I think bourbon's supposed to be from, but a lot of places do the same kind of style. You know, it started actually with, in the Appalachian Mountains with Scottish and Irish immigrants to America in the 1700s. And they used the craft that they learned in their home country and did it their own ways and made its own unique whiskey style that people like so much. So a, a story about bourbon that I just heard recently, which is incredible. So one of the most famous bourbons is Jack Daniels. And Jack Daniel, probably the most, one of the most popular whiskeys in the world, you know, started his uh, brewery way, distillery way back in the 1800s. And he actually hid the fact that he was taught his whiskey recipe by a former slave, a black man named Nathan Nearest Green, Tennessee. Um, he was a black head distiller called a master distiller. He was born into slavery and emancipated after the Civil War. And he is the one who taught distilling techniques to Mr. Jack Daniel. Whoa. And Green actually was hired as the first master distiller for Jack Daniel's distillery. But it was not until after his death, after 1888, that he was recognized as the first. During this time, Proper titles were never given to a black man, especially in the South. And he was the first African-American master distiller on record in the United States. There, I'm sure there was more. Which ties into the next story about rum. But um, that's just amazing. So Jack Daniel himself never mentioned this guy. Um, which is a shame, you know. He probably fear of his reputation on, you know, racist times and, ah, oh, it's crazy. And it's amazing how these uh, stories could come out now, so. Nathan Nearest Green, thank you for your contribution to whiskey history and bourbon and everything. Rest in peace and, yeah. That's an incredible story. So, all right, this one, is a colonial creation rum, um, which is, I like rum, very sh sugary, potent, Come, comes in so many different varieties. Um, Jamaican rum, Barbadian rum, Cuban rum, Puerto Rican rum, all the different islands of the amazing Caribbean. 
I think the, in South America too, Guyana rum and Venezuelan rum. Ah oh, man, rum is a whole different world and culture. That's awesome too. All right, so I don't want to go too much into rum history now. This video is getting a little long and maybe, you know, someday I'll be somewhere in the world where rum is available, make a own video about it. But technically there was rum-like drinks back in uh, India and in the Malay area at some point. It was like sugar wine they cut in Iran also. But let's tie it in with the contributions of African Americans to uh, whiskey and alcohol culture. So, whoo, excuse me, allergies. <laughs> whoo, all right. So, African Americans aren't just from the United States. African Americans are any people that were imported to South, Central, Caribbean, or North America. You know, Honduras, Brazil, Canada, anyone of African descent over the whole Western Hemisphere. The, the name America is a real misnomer. It's the United States of America, one country. America is the whole place. North America, which includes Canada, Mexico, USA, Central America, South America, you know, Brazil, Argentina, and the Caribbean. It's all America. So it's really a real misnomer. So. Back in the 1600s, in the heavy slave, terrible, terrible, sad days of plantation Caribbean life, where several countries were involved, uh, Portugal, Spain, Dutch, England, for several hundred years, they were using slaves to work uh, sugarcane fields and different products, and it was a real just bad time a lot of people dehumanized we don't need to get into the specifics but just imagine how terrible it was so it was a terrible life and some slaves in the caribbean african descent uh they were working with the sugar every day day in and day out of course not paid um and suffering all kinds of horribleness and this humid and very hot foreign land ruled by these, uh, you know, overseers. Anyways, they discovered by working with this uh, sugar every day that molasses, a byproduct of sugar, can be fermented into alcohol. Who knew? Rum, the Caribbean rum that we all love and that this whiskey is barreled in, invented by slaves. Just like the contribution of Jack... Uh, to Jack Daniels from that man, Nathan Ness Green, up, up a little north from the Caribbean. So it doesn't say here what island that was on. Was it maybe Barbados, Kate Kitts and Nevis? Uh, yeah, it doesn't say, that probably wasn't documented, but uh, you know, so much sugar was being made and molasses is a byproduct of that. It was all over the place. Barbados, Brazil, they started making rum. Shipping it over to uh, shipping it over to Europe and started becoming real popular, and it is to this day. So thank you, African Americans, Caribbean, Afro Caribbean, to your contribution to rum, which uh, you know you probably didn't get any credit for, just like that man with the Jack Daniels and. There probably wasn't hardly one cent given to anybody involved in the creation of that. And that's the sad part about it. Um, but the cool part about it is those stories that now I can know. And it's important for this time and these days of 2020. And I thought I would go on a little bit different story than just Irish whiskey. Even though I got tons of respect for Irish and Ireland culture. Come learn about that on some of my other videos. This is a really cool distillery, West Cork, here from Cork County, Ireland. I like both of their whiskeys very much right here. Let's try it one more time. Nice, I think I did mix them up. <laughs> I think that's the uh, wrong one.
maybe not. No, oh, this one is definitely the run. You can tell it's uh, there's some similarities, but I like the rum one a lot better. All right, well, hope you enjoyed those stories. Um, happy Juneteenth, uh, a holiday that needs to be educated about around the world, and we all need to educate ourselves, even myself. And uh, thanks for drinking with Ray. Remember, subscribe. Like, all I'm asking for is a buck a show, a buck a post. Check out the link below for that. I would really appreciate it. If you like the kind of thing I'm talking about and doing, I could get better and get put out more. Like, subscribe, uh, become friends on social media, all that stuff, man. Don't be a waste of energy. And thanks for drinking with Ray. Can I drink both of these at once? No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> all right. Slunge, West Cork, you're a good one. See you next time.